In today's lesson, we're going to go ahead and take what we've learned about ray casting and use that to create some sort of pathfinding for our enemy ships. So let's go ahead, we'll open up our scripts folder, and I'm going to jump straight into enemy movement. I'm going to come down to the bottom, make a new method for pathfinding, and I don't need to take any parameters or return anything. So the way I'm going to have this work is if we go ahead and zoom in on our enemy, so he, he's facing this way on the Z, we can tell because we've always aligned everything according to the Z axis going forward. I want to go ahead and cast four rays. Since I'm moving in 3D space, I want four. Depending on the game and your model, it will vary a little bit, but I know for this game, I'm going to want four. And I'm just going to have one come up from the left, one from the right, one from the top, and one from the bottom. And the way I want this to work is they'll come out a certain distance in front of me. And then as I'm flying towards the player, if, uh, for instance, this wall is in the way, and where's my player? The player's over here. So as I go to fly towards that player, he's going to be turning and going this way. But this one ray cast that I have coming from the right, when it touches this wall here, it's going to tell us that, oh, there's something in the way to the right. Turn to the left. And we'll keep doing that as long as it's touching something. And same thing with going up or down. He's going to be angled upwards flying to the player. So that bottom ray that we have here is going to be touching the, the wall as he tries to get by it. And it's going to be like, oh, you know, the bottom's touching, pull up a bit. So let's go ahead and start off with those actual position of the rays. So I'm going to jump back into my code. And I'm going to make four vector threes. You don't really need to create these, but I think it's easier to visualize in the code exactly what's going on if we have them. So I'm going to make this vector three. And I'm just going to have one that's called left. And what we're going to do is say, take our transform dot position, and then we're going to add some sort of value to it. We want to offset it. Now we want to go to the left and we have a transform dot right. They used to be a left, but they got rid of it, but that's fine. Cause all we have to do is just subtract it. Now this just works like transform forward. It moves one unit to, in this case, to the left. So I want to multiply this by some fixed amount and I'm going to want it to be the exact same amount for all of my vectors. So I'm going to come up to the top and I'll create a serialized field for it. I'll make it a float because I'm not sure exactly what value I want. And like I said, it's going to change for each individual model that you're using for your enemy. I'm going to call it ray cast offset. And let's see, I'm using a, a cylinder right now, which is a, a one. So let's do 2.5. Great. So we're going to move to the left one unit, but let's multiply that by ray cast offset. So 2.5. So we're actually going to go 2.5 units to the left. Great. Let's go ahead. We'll duplicate this one. We'll call this one right. And instead of subtracting, we're going to add now. So now we're going to go to the right 2.5. We'll go ahead, paste it in again. This one we're going to call up. Can you figure out what we're going to do here? We're going to go 2.5. And of course, we need down, which you probably already figured out now how to do. We're going to go ahead and subtract 2.5. Now let's go ahead and draw those rays on our enemy. So I'm not sure if we've actually used debug.drawray yet, but it works quite a bit just like the draw line, except while well, we're drawing a ray. And if we take a look here, we need a start. So I'm going to start off with left. We need a direction, and I'm always going to use transform forward because I want it to shoot forward from myself. We need a color. I'm just going to say color dot. Um, let's do cyan for this one. And there's one more thing we need to do here. This is only going to shoot it one unit forward and we're not going to be able to see that. If we go ahead, jump into the game, start it up. Come on, freaking bio. There we go. We go ahead, start it up and let's turn his movement off. Well, we'll turn his attack off, which is already off. I don't need the trail render right now either. And I'm going to come up to the top here and just turn everything off for now. And we also need to call that pathfinding. There we go. So we can test the code that we're writing. So if we go ahead, start it off, we're probably not going to see. Oh, actually, never mind. Yes, we are going to see it because I moved it out to the side 2.5 units. But remember, it's starting in the middle of our, our model, and that doesn't even stick out far enough here. So we're going to go ahead and take some, something to multiply it by. 
So I'm going to come up to the top. I'm going to make another serialized field. And of course, it's going to be a float because it's distance. And I'm going to say ray cast. Oh, no. It's the distance he can detect from. So let's say detection distance. And we'll start off with 20. We'll come down here. And this forward, we're going to multiply by that now. We'll go ahead. We'll save that off. Come back in. Let it recompile. Hit play. And there we go. That's much better. We can now actually see that ray out in front. And it gives us a bit of room to maneuver. Now, the length of these rays is going to change depending on how fast uh, your ship is moving and how close objects are together. But let's go ahead and we'll draw the rest of these rays. So we got left. I'm going to do right. And um, we could go ahead and make them all different colors. I'm not that worried about it. And we got up. And we got down. Again, you don't need these. This is just purely visual, just to help you see in game where everything is. Uh, but there we go. We've got our four rays, one on the top, one on the bottom, one to the left, one to the right. Great. I'm actually going to move him back a bit and down. There we go. So let's jump back into the code. Now, the way I'm going to work with the ray casting here is it's kind of a tertiary system. I think earlier I said binary, but it's kind of tertiary. So let's take left and right turning. As I'm flying forward, I'm either going to keep going forward and forward meaning straight to the player, or I'm going to turn left or I'm going to turn right. Now, turning left and right is purely based on whether or not my left or right ray collides with something. And the flaw in this system is that what if they both collide with something in the same frame? I'm not trying to make a perfect system here. I'm just trying to make one that, well, works and is easily understandable for people who are just starting out. This is our first attempt at pathfinding. So let's hit one that, you know, looks good and is easy to implement. So I'm going to need a way to store our ray cast, well, what we hit with it. So just like before, I'll go ahead and make a hit. Variable, I'm going to come down and we're going to say if physics dot raycast. And just like we did up here, we'll go ahead and say left for our origin. Then we want to go transform dot forward. We want to store what we hit out in our hit variable. And we want to go to the full length of our detection distance. Whew, not too bad, right? Now to kind of get that binary left and right, what we do is we'll just go ahead, copy this again, paste it in, except now we're going to say else if. And we're going to switch this to right. So the way it works is if we hit something from the left, don't bother checking for the right. We're just going to turn uh, to the left. Oh, sorry, to the right automatically. Got to keep that in mind. I might get that mixed up, but that's fine. It's an easy fix. And we're going to be doing the same thing with up and down, but let's just stick with left and right for now. So the way we're, we're going to have it turn is we're going to add some sort of modifier, our vector three to our turning, based on whether or not we collided with something on the left or something on the right. So let's create that variable. And I'm just going to call it offset. No, let's call it something better. Raycast offset. And I am going to start that off as a vector 3.0, just so all, all values equal zero. And I know by default it does come out as a vector 3.0. I just want to see it in actual code. All right, so the way it's going to work is we're going to go say, if we hit something on the left, that means we got to go ahead and move a little to the right. So we'll say vector three dot right. We'll move it one unit and do the same thing for the left. Except if we collide with something on the right, then we want to go to the left, right? Wrong, right, left, right? Yeah, it's left. <laughs> okay, so we've got the left and the right done. We also need to know a way if, uh, if there's been any sort of modification. I guess down here we could just compare to see if vector three or if our ray, ca ray cast offset is equal to vector 3.0, we can also go ahead and create a Boolean value and just go ahead and store that Boolean value in here every time something changes. Uh, let's go with the comparing the vector 3 first. So I'm going to copy this whole block. To be honest, since we only have the one thing in there, we don't need these. And it keeps the code a little shorter. But I am going to put a space in here. So I'm also going to check up and down. 
Uh, nothing else in there changes, except now we got to go up. And this actually is a negative. If we hit something on the top, we want to start turning down. So negative up. And of course, if we hit something from the bottom one, we want to go up. Great. So now let's go ahead and do that check. So if raycast offset does not equal vector 3.0. So we've had some change throughout here. Then we're going to go ahead and take our transform dot rotate. We're going to rotate by our raycast offset multiplied by some value. Uh, let's just start off with five. We'll have to go ahead and put this up top. And of course, since this is being called an update, we need time dot delta time. And then of course we have an else. What if it does equal zero? Then we're just going to go ahead and call our regular turn method, meaning go ahead and turn toward the player. Now, because we're calling turn down here, and to be honest, we don't need that either. Now, because we're calling turn down here means we don't want to call it twice. We don't want to call it up here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. So make sure you've saved off your script. Let it recompile. There we go. And let's also go ahead and turn on the trail renderer. And let's follow him. So he got out of the way. He's flying around us. Tight. Uh, let's go ahead and take us and move us. He hit me. I think we got something a little bit wrong in our code here. Let me go ahead and take a look. I didn't comment out turn. That could have been it. All right. So that didn't work out well. He went through there, but uh, I'll have to take a look to see how far he started back. He might actually start with all four rays already touching. And like I said, if more than one ray touches, uh, the, the opposite rays, like the left and ray both touch at the same time in that same frame, it's not going to know what direction to turn. Same with up and down. But everything seems fine in here. If you notice the path he's taking is around all these asteroids. So let's go ahead, we'll move him. Let's do it up. Let's try to get him into a nice cluster. And might need to tweak some of his settings. Let's get him right up here with these ones. A little bit higher. And I guess ultimately just flying around and watching him would probably be the best way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead, zoom in on him. I want to zoom in a bit more. And let's just go flying. Oh, and of course, I hit something right away. Now, to be fair, I don't care if I hit stuff. I only care if he does. And he's not shooting at me right now, so I'm going to zip through all these. And, of course, I hit a few. Remember how hard it was to... Oh, straight on. So, it looks like he is ignoring everything. I might have to go in and tweak some settings here and there later on. Uh, but there we go. We have our very first iteration of our pathfinding. We've done it all with ray casting. It's going to work in 3D space. Let me know down below in the comments how yours worked out, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest, or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>